So this is my hopper. Um, it doesn't really deserve to be called that because it doesn't hop, but if it did, um, hypothetically it would work by pulling this square plate up onto a plate that fits inside the, like, the indent of the square, um, and then twisting the rest of the hopper around that so that it would get locked in place by the edges of the smaller squares. Um, and then as this trigger mechanism here, um, which is basically rubber tubing connecting two plates, wanting to make them go back parallel whenever you turn them, um, that trigger would turn it back parallel slowly, and um, this square plate would then be able to move downward from its locked position and slam against this circular plate here. Um, and then by doing that, uh, the hopper would originally be oriented like this. When the plate slammed against each other, um, this kind of main plunger area would be forced upward, like that, and it would bring the whole hopper up with its momentum. Um, now it doesn't really do that, <laughs> and one of the main reasons that I think it doesn't do that is because the trigger doesn't work as it was intended to work, because I can't move this plate um, against the other plate and rotate it, since these rubber tubes here um, really do not want the thing to rotate because there's so much tension in them that they just want to stay perpendicular as much as possible. Um, so it's really impossible to get the plate to be in the position it's supposed to be in um, to begin with. So in order to fix that, uh, first of all, I'd probably take away this entire tr trigger mechanism because obviously the force of these tubes is enough to pull the trigger back. Um, so I'd just leave these to loosely rotate against each other without the rubber tubing in the middle. Um, and then secondly, I'd probably give it a lot more area um, to lock onto. Currently, it's only locking against these tiny little corners that you can kind of see here. Um, they're really small and it would be pretty quick for it to unlock from them. So I would need to make it so it rotates like almost half of a circle um, in order to kind of lock it in place and it would slowly be able to rotate back over and then the trigger would activate rather than activating in a matter of, you know, a fraction of a second and then my hand's still there and it won't hop because I'm blocking it, obviously. Um, so that's something that I want to incorporate in my future designs. And then also, um, when it comes back and it tries to slam against this circular plate, um, these rubber tubes no longer have very much tension as it approaches the circular plate, and so they just kind of block it from hitting very forcefully. Um, and I think it would be a lot better if it had an intermediate piece of plastic here to hit against so that it really um, forced it to go that way rather than just kind of slowly being guided to a stop by these rubber tubes here. Um, and the only way that I've gotten it to actually slam against this circular plate anyway is by adding more rubber tubing, which is even more tension resisting my pull onto the trigger mechanism. So I really don't want to have to have that much tension in the first place, and so I'd like to put a little um, plastic buffer there. Um, and in order to do that, I probably would have to make this whole stem a lot longer too, um, which is something I plan to do. And I would also like to make there be a lot less plastic, because I noticed that this is a pretty big hopper, and it's pretty bulky, and I think that I could use a lot less and have it do the same thing. Um, and it would probably go a lot higher, well obviously it would go a lot higher since it doesn't go ad anywhere right now, but um, it would go pretty high if it were lighter. And so I'd like to use less plastic in the next um, design. Um, so hopefully the next one works a lot better than this one does, and we'll see on Wednesday. <laughs>